Thanks for helping us, Amy. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry. It's just been AT and T not good. But this is Zoom, and we have two Zoom accounts, so we should be able to host two meetings at the same time. But this morning, uh, that is not the case. I don't know why. I'm like, oh, you know, it's some some days your job. You feel like I just want to go go back to bed. You know. Well. <laughs> so, okay, Peter, I'm going to make you host. Uh, I mean, I don't have a job, and some days I feel like I just want to go back to bed. Yeah. Well, and so, once again, AT&T this morning. So, I'm uploading the service from today, and I'm going to send out a link, so it'll be up on YouTube, so you can watch it, because you will want me to watch it. It was phenomenal. I'm Thank sorry you missed really most of it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. And I'm sorry about the Daughters of the King. Um, we didn't have any problem. No, no that went well. No, no, oh, oh great. Good to know. Okay. Well, that's so weird. And it kept the meeting open. That, But we have two accounts. So we're supposed to be able to run simultaneously simultaneous meetings. But at, like everything else today, that didn't work out. So, you know. Anyway, y'all have a good class. And um, I guess mine does too. Amy. Uh, yes. Amy, Amy. Uh -huh. um, we're, we have old ears at our house, and we have difficulty understanding what goes on in the service sometimes. Would it be possible, would you ask Gerald if he would give you a copy of his sermon yes. that you could just yes. email? Uh, that's okay. what I've already asked him, and he's going to, and then I'm going to cut out the sermon, and, okay. and like I do on Mondays, okay. and um, that's one of the things that uh, we'll be talking about. I'm developing a communications plan and that's one of the things in there is that we get someone who is and could be Becky's brother because he's phenomenal um, if he if he'd do it for us but a really good audio technician those people make hundreds of an app dollars an hour because they know their stuff and get them in and kind of diagnose our whole thing because as we start to you know even when we regather we're still going to want to do a lot of things because we'll have this direct access AT&T as long as it works um, in the church and so we want to make sure that our sound system is good and we still have some things to overcome right now as well um, so anyway so we're aware of it it's just one of those things where you know uh, yeah finally <laughs> thank you and I, I really like I mean, I really appreciated everything you do and how hard you work. Oh, yeah. Yes. We try to fix things, but like I said, to this morning, not so much. Anyway, y'all have a good class, and I will see y'all later. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. And am I the only one that didn't oh. get the service this morning? Oh, Hi, Flo. No, no, no. Hi, Flo. I got your message. Your phone rang, but my phone actually records the service that wasn't uh, live streaming this morning. So, anyway... Um, Yes. No, we had AT&T problems because it, what happened was it just kicked the whole service off. So it's not your, some mornings if we live stream and it's okay and you have problems, then it's probably your connection. I have AT&T here at home. I have fiber and I still have problems. So, um, but this morning it was our AT&T service at the church. So it must've been AT&T downtown that had issues. So, um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm uploading the service to YouTube and I'm going to send out a link and you'll get that within as soon as it uploads my AT&T here is kind of slow this morning. So anyway, um, so as soon as that goes out, you'll be able to watch the service on YouTube, the whole thing. So thank you, Amy. Y'all have a good class. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Me too. I miss having church on Sunday morning. Yes. <laughs> Did y'all miss you the know, whole service? We're just part of it? A 40, 40 minutes or so into it, right during, right. unfortunately, yeah. Gerald's sermon. Yeah, right in the middle yeah. of Gerald's sermon. But I, was, but I kept looking at the program and thinking all the things that I was missing after the sermon, too. You know, yeah. so right. well, I never got anything. So it was. Well, we, we read it on the bulletin and with me as lay reader, as we've done before when it stopped. the la Go back and look at your bulletin. That very closing prayer was just so beautiful. It really okay. was. Good, good, good. Missed that. Got to go read it. Um, does, did Amy say why we were having trouble getting logged in? I didn't there was another meeting, I think.
There was another meeting that didn't end, uh, but as she said, we're supposed to be able to have simultaneous Zoom meetings because we have two accounts, but for some reason that didn't hold true today. Okay. I kept getting the message that the, um, there was another meeting in progress, so I thought that's what was going on, but. Um, well, I wondered if it was the daughter of the king, but we probably, all left. Yeah, but it got okay. big, so we're good. Yeah. Well, let's see. I have an opening prayer here for us. Let's go find that. Peter can remember how to do this. I'll share a screen. It's a, it's a short prayer, but it's it's mine. And it's for us. Lord, please, if we bow our heads. Lord, please let us lead us as we approach this fourth lesson to have a better understanding of historical American racial discrimination so that we may grow to become better ready problem solvers. And Amen. let's come back together. Amen. <laughs> Here we are. I want bigger than that. All I see is six of you. Hmm. I still see the prayer. I do too. Yeah, me too. And I'm a, oh, stop sharing. That's right. Here we go. Okay. Welcome. And we're back. I thought we'd go backwards. We had ch chapters uh, 17, 18, 19, 20 today. And um, 17 has most of the, uh, kind of, 17 has most of the, the meat, you know, but we could use 2019 and 18 kind of as an introduction to lead us into what 17 is trying to, well, um, lead us in a direction. So um, in chapter 20, um, she's talking about a situation where she was um, acting as Robin Hood is the way she described it. And she wanted to show uh, all the, the minority population in and around Boston um, the culture that she grew up with. And um, so she, what she found herself doing was that she was going to powerful white-led organizations and exposing inner city youth to what she called culture or what, what is culture but it was a culture that she knew and was familiar with rather than going to individuals and organizations in those neighborhoods she was trying to serve and saying, what do you need? And in retrospect, she felt that she could have done better and would have done well to go to them and speak with them. Um, uh, so quickly, let's go to a I'm going to share the screen again and go to the chapter question. Does anyone, do y'all have something to write on and write with? I didn't ask you to do that last week. But if you have something, you might want to grab it now. And I'll go on, I'll share the screen and pull up the question at the end of chapter 20. Hmm. It is here. And I'll read it aloud. If you were going to be given $100,000 and told to give to one charity, which one would you pick? What are the races, the organization's three top executives, and what race is the chair of the board? And go ahead and write down your organization. Just take a moment. All right, and I'll stop sharing. Oh, no, no, I'll leave that up. We can share my screen. Y'all can still see each other. Is that right? Yeah. No, okay, so I'll stop sharing. All five of us? Is that? <laughs> no. Um, so uh, who's got an organization they were going to donate to? I'll write it. Go ahead. The Salvation Army. Salvation Army, okay. And 
that would be serving uh, a lot of the minority community. Isn't that right, Flo? Uh, yes, I, I would think yeah. so. And I don't know the board members. I don't either, but I looked them up. I, I they looked are? Them. They okay. are white. They, they are, are white. white. Okay. A married couple that are white. But I do think they are a great, a great organization, yes. too. Right, right. And then after, then after I look them up, I, I know of one group called Interchange. You might want to look them up. They serve inner city communities in a lot of the world. Uh, a friend of mine works with them in Guatemala, and they live among the poor. That's one of the, among the inner city people. Uh, so that's one of their basic thing. And a lot of the people that, I don't really know who is the president. I, did, I couldn't find that real quickly. But um, a lot of the people that they, that are the missionaries in each of their cities are from that, that community. Great. Okay. Yeah, I noticed a lot of when we're serving sometimes, and, and it's great serving internationally, but a lot of this book is dealing with domestic. Um, anybody else have an organization? Go ahead, Claire. Um, I looked up communities and schools because uh, I've worked directly with them a lot and they're awesome. Um, their president and CEO is Hispanic, but then both their, um, their chairman and their vice chairman are both white. Okay. I'd like to go with Flo and choose the Salvation Army and why they may, the leadership may be white. The couple that lead the, the temple, Salvation Army, are black. And they are wonderful. We had uh, the Lieutenant Millen speak to the Daughters of the King one Sunday, and she made a great impression on us. Outstanding. That's wonderful. And, and Claire, the name of that organization was Communities in Schools? Yeah, we usually just call it CIS for short. But yeah, Communities in Schools. Okay. And, and what do they do, Claire? I, I missed that. Uh, man, I, I just, sorry, I love them so much. I could gush, so I'm going to try to keep this short. <laughs> But basically, they are the ones that really, when a teacher finds out, for example, that a kid doesn't have school supplies and can't afford it or isn't getting food at home, or, um, you know, we had one year a family whose uh, house burnt down, and so they were suddenly displaced. They had no clothing. They had no toothbrush. You know, they had nothing. They're the people who organize getting donations, um, getting supplies for kids, feeding the kids, like all those things that the kids need first before they can actually succeed in school. You know, they need food, they need to feel safe. And so they help with that. They do small groups to help with um, students who are feeling left out. They're just, they're amazing. Wow. And what is their organization here in, in, in Bell County or in Temple? I'm, I'm interested in um, I can definitely tell you more later. I don't wanna take over, cause again, I could go on forever. Um, but for example, um, we have I want to say two or three staff members at Temple High School. They have an office and they're on campus every single day. Um, I don't know about other campuses. I really know about our particular campus. Oh, it's not pretty special. Glenda, what do you have? Glenda? Um, I would give my money to Grace Initiative of South Liberty County, which is the Meals on Wheels program. Um, that was established four years ago with the intent of covering all of South Liberty County. And so far we're only, or they are only delivering food in two, uh, metro, two, uh, uh, two towns, uh, Liberty and Ames. And uh, $100,000 would enable them to spread all the way across the county and uh, take in the rural areas as well as the cities. So that would be my, um, that would be my charity. Okay. Yeah. And I, I suppose they're in that, it's a rural community. Sounds like it'd probably be led by persons that are, well, sorry, Caucasian, white, but there's there's one executive the only person they pay is the director and she is white but uh the board is uh has i think uh i've been away for a while so i'm not sure but uh three african americans and one hispanic and the rest are white out of nine so oh, okay thanks and it's called grace initiative of south 
Liberty mm -hmm. County. Yeah. And yes, and GRACE is an acronym for Greater Respect for Aging Through Community Effort. Greater Respect. For the Aging Through Community Effort. Okay. Going back to um, uh, our um, previous uh, Zoom focus, there is a Office of Black Ministries in the National Episcopal Church. Um, and it is um, directed by the Reverend Ronald Byrd Sr., who is black and uh, is a member of the providing bishop staff. Um, he, there, uh, website says the Office of Black Ministry seeks to inspire, transform, and empower the people of the African diaspora to live fully into the Jesus movement. Mm -hmm. But it has specific um, um, functions such as black student scholarships, a discernment academy, um, healing from internalized impression, uh, oppression, um, and so forth. Well, we need to jump on that bandwagon. That's black congregation, black clergy, and congregation directory, and so forth. Okay, well, great. There, there's also a um, a scholarship fund at the seminary here, Seminary of the Southwest, uh, or whatever they're calling it now. Uh, the Polly, do you remember her last name? I know who you're speaking about. They do a lecture series every year. Yes, and they've established a scholarship fund in her name um, to help uh, minority students uh, be able to attend seminary and help pay some of their expenses beyond tuition and all of that to enable more uh, minority students to be able to be there. Good, good. Um, let's go to chapter 19, where she's talking about how family and, and friend connections help, uh, help each of us or helped, certainly helped her through uh, their lives. How have these, maybe you can come up with stories how either A, they've helped you, or B, you know someone of, it's not white, and how they were unable to get help because of their lack of connection. Anyone? And I'll speak. <laughs> um, I I just had a real rough. Uh, I my my family rolls their eyes even though they know me well and say you had how many jobs in your life? Um, Far too many, we'll just leave it at that. But boy, did I need a lot of help through a lot of times. And I know that if I had a family that couldn't support me and send me to school or, and it wasn't, it wasn't connections that got me jobs. So I know um, I've seen that in, fam in um, family members as well. But um, I, I needed financial support on occasion. And then I looked through, uh, at, at other family members, they did at other at times as well. Had we not had that, which would be common among folks who don't have the financial means my parents did, they just, I don't know what would happen. They'd end up moving in with somebody sleeping on the couch. It was, it was a privilege I had because I was white um, and my parents were able to um, cash in on the privilege that they had through the many generations that preceded them. Anyone else maybe with business connections? I got my first job as a teacher because my father was a principal in another school in the district where I had applied. And uh, I, I like to think that, that 
when they interviewed me, they thought I had maybe some possibility of being a good teacher, but I know sure. that the reason I got that job was because my dad was at, at another school. You got the interview and then you were awesome. Uh, likewise, I, my first teaching job right out of college was because the home economics consultant was a personal friend, uh, the mother of one of my school friends. I never even had to interview. She just walked me into the personnel director's office and introduced me and I had the wow. job. I never even had to answer a question. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> So it, it does. I also, I yeah. also got a bank loan. In, the, in those days, teachers didn't get their first paycheck until the end of September. And they started, that was the first year that they started school in the middle of August. So I had to move from Beaumont to the Dallas area and live for six weeks without a paycheck, my husband and I. And uh, he was looking for a job and trying to get into college at, at North Texas. And so I was able to get a bank loan based on the fact that the bank president was a good friend of my uncle. So, yeah. Uh, that, well. those... <sighs> hey, to be connected. All right. And, and as we've covered through class, it's tough to have connections when you've been excluded in so many ways through uh, so many years. Um, let's go on to chapter 18. How often do you think of racism? Um, that was the, the theme of the chapter. And I, I think one of the things that came to my mind, um, there are, say in my family, how often do we think of cancer is, and I don't know of a family member, close family member who has cancer. It could change tomorrow. We don't talk about it much because it's not, it's not present in our lives. And you all have situations in your lives where there are terrible things that can happen, but it hasn't happened to you yet. So you don't talk about it much. And in, in the book or in the chapter, um, the discussion was she went to class and was how often do you think about race? And it was uh, daily, weekly, monthly, uh, or twice a month or a few times a year, something along that line. And is anybody a daily person? I think you watch news or uh, How often do you think of race? Do you think of it daily? She wanted to know how often you discussed it with your family. Did you discuss race on a daily basis on a, and, um, and then, so she was looking at it, how many times did they talk about it as a family? Okay. And, um, and she, she, you know, she thought never, you know, it's just not something we talk about. And all the black people in her class all said they talked about it every day. And I, that, I was just, that was something that I really got out of this the most, that really made me think, really made me, oh my gosh, you know, we didn't talk about it. Uh, my father was the president of the school board when we integrated the schools in Belton and it went beautifully and everything went fine. And I think it was his proudest moment of his life. But, uh, and we talked about that, but we didn't talk about race and how it was affecting our town or us or the people, you know, we just didn't. And I, I really, this was something that I wanted to say I, because it just, it blew me away. Yeah. And I, I have a, I have ahead. a good friend who's African American and we talk about race. Uh, she's the probably the only person I'm com the only black person I'm comfortable talking about it with because she's so open. And the first time I read this book, I, I read this chapter, and and I asked her. I said, "Is this true? Is race something you think about or talk about every single day with your family?" And she said, "Oh yeah." She said, "It is. It is the number one topic in family life, uh, in in Black America." And that just shocked me. 
So if I mean, we have an issue, them. oh, please, go ahead. They're teaching, you know, they, they're talking about it because they're saying if you get stopped, you know, this is how you should act. If, if you know, you're jogging, this is how you, you know, and Gerald talked about that today, that he was stopped while he was jogging. I mean, they have a lot to talk about because there's a lot of information that needs to get spread to those kids and those families, which is, you know, just horrifying, but, but a fact. So. Yeah. I, I, I got stopped jogging, but it was two in the morning and um, I fit the description and I got to walk away. I was never worried that I was going to get shot at. And, and why I was jogging at two in the morning. Well, <laughs> and you're asking for trouble. I was, I was lucky it was just a cop that stopped me. Um, so yeah, that's a real eye opener. Um, I didn't realize it was daily for so many folks. And that's one of the reasons we're here is because it's such a big issue for so many individuals in our country. And, and, and they're, they're so very concerned about it and want something done so they, they don't have to think about it every day or don't have the desire to think about it every day. I have a, a Bible verse here. I'll share the screen. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and read through it as soon as I share it here. I have it. <laughs> it was here, here. You don't want to see that. <laughs> Excuse me. That's not me. Um, It was, oh, well, I have a, at the end of the, Job is, um, he has a chance to speak in chapter 29. And he's speaking about how he has had a chance to work with the poor and destitute and home and um, widows, orphans, uh, and it finally gets uh, I, it, the whole discourse starting with the second ver uh, in the 12th, sorry, first verse of chapter 29 on through 12, it goes on down to about 17th, about all the people he has helped because, or, or look for, f and trying to find ways to assist them because that's what we do as, as God's children. And he had the means and had uh, figured out what it was that we needed to be doing. Well, what, what, and, well and acted upon what it was he needed to be doing. He, uh, and then in chapter uh, sorry, 12, he says, deliver the poor who cried for help and the fatherless who had none to help him. Um, so it, this is very much a Christian thing. When we have a population that's dealing with, his, with their families on a personal level um, and discussing it every day because it affects them so very, so very much, we as a nation, I believe, or the, well, the author argues, we're here talking about the book, um, that it's something that it's, it's, it's a great thing to be involved with and a great, great thing to, to work towards. So we have, a, um, I'll, I'll go on. Oh, does anyone have a comment about that, about the church and, and our activity um, regarding race in the nation or the community?
I think Archbishop Curry has really um, awakened us as a national church um, to how race conscious we've not been. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he's brought love very prominently into the whole picture of, of all of Christianity. And I think we desperately needed to hear that. This Regarding me, everything. I sort of kept thinking of what Flo's question was last week when she said, you know, okay, what are we supposed to do with all of this that we're reading about? And I kept pondering that, and I, I think maybe developing more empathy or, you know, showing more love one person at a time, not doing some of those things that Gerald, you know, referred to in his sermon. Although, I, you know, again, I didn't get to hear the whole thing. But I, that's what I was thinking of changing on a one-on-one -on -one basis, being better. Diane, that reminds me so much. Archbishop Desmond Tutu, and please stop me somebody if I've mentioned this before, but uh, when looking at problems of the world, he said, you know, there's an old African proverb, how do you eat an elephant? He said that's one bite at a time. That you may be a single drop in the ocean of humanity but what you do may be of significance. So that starting with ourselves and our own hearts, it just brought that to my mind. Small well, I, think, I think that is true for sure, but I think kind of what the author is talking about, it's not, it's not, she wants us to educate ourselves true but to also see how it's like it's in all of our systems you know and, and it's been in government and housing and all these different things and that that maybe just having empathy is not going to bring things to the end really and I know you were just talking about Bishop Curry I just listened and maybe some of you have already listened to the season two Wake Love bonus. There are two bonus where he's talking with um, Dean, I can't remember her name. She's the Dean of the of a seminary. And so they are talking about racial conciliation and it's, a, it's they're very interesting podcasts if you get a chance to. So is Bishop Curry speaking with the president? Who was that again? She's the dean of, I don't remember, it's one, it's on, um, let me think, it's on the season two uh, bonus Way of Love podcasts, and, and um, they're, they're really great, they're, they're both fairly short, they're not really very long. Don't think to uh, listen to them. Um, Can you maybe post that link in the uh, formation class page, Valerie? Yes, I could do that. Uh huh. Thank you. Yes, I can do that. And then I I tried to send a message to Claire, but I don't. Um, because I've been a member of this group called Be the Bridge, which is a Facebook group, and one of the uh, things that they have you do is a, a series of podcasts called Seen on Radio. And maybe I already told you, I don't know. But they have, um, there's these. That are very enlightening uh, and, and I think could be helpful. Great. Getting a lot of wonderful sources here. Um, Valerie just used a word that stuck out to me. She said racial conciliation rather than ra racial reconciliation. And I was in a meeting uh, back in the, seems like decades ago now, but it was last fall, uh, that was talking about uh, 
race matters. And one of the African-American speakers said that racial reconciliation is not a term that has any validity because there has never been conciliation. And um, so I've, I was pleased to hear Valerie use that term. I looked up that uh, bonus and it's Dean Kelly Brown Douglas. Now this synopsis doesn't say where she is a dean, but she could be at a cathedral or she could be at a seminary. But anyway, that's, and it says it speaks about the impact of slavery on his family and the Episcopal Church. Thank you. Let's move forward to chapter 17, or backwards. Um, I, I just, no, we, we can skip that. Um, I think uh, we've seen how law used to be uh, how people uh, of color were kept um, as second class citizens. Um, and then through the civil rights uh, era of the 60s, we're getting uh, those laws. I, I don't know that they have been completely erased, but now we're, policy became a problem after World War II. Not so much the law after the 60s. Uh, we're still dealing with the legacy of the law and policy problems, uh, certainly, in that we have a divided nation by communities and still dealing with uh, individual and systemic racism, but um, practice is what we, we talked about that in particular, how neighborhoods are sold by real estate agents and people go looking for neighborhoods as individual and individual individuals and individual families um, looking for neighborhoods that are, um, if they're white families looking for uh, neighborhoods of uh, without uh, colored people in them or non-white people in them. Um, and so we uh, have a situation now in that we have divided neighborhoods. In 2015, uh, the Washington Examiner, May 5th of 2017, uh, noted there are 77% of uh, black babies were born to unwed mothers. So um, our nation still suffers from that. And I, we've, we've read about the economic disparities between uh, black and white populations. Uh, it's no surprise to me that it's, there's a racial divide there in the, in, uh, in 2015, we'd have um, so many babies born to unwed um, mothers. Uh, Peter, may I say something about that? Yes. Um, the great society that Lyndon Johnson put forth, and one of the things in that, you know, there were black families had, you know, there I've read uh, uh, statistics and the number of, uh, you know, to black families with a mother and a daddy were much, much higher in the 40s and 50s and, and our early 60s. But in, say, in 1965 or about the time of this, um, one of the things that was um, put out was that they provided an apartment, you know, for a woman and her children, uh, provided an apartment, $300 a month, does nobody remember that? And uh, a man could not be living in the apartment or the house at that time. And if they found out, if the social worker or the government worker found out, then she would not get, uh, you know, the uh, stipend in the apartment and so forth. And so is it any wonder uh, that we have. I don't think we really need to blame the black community as much as we, <laughs> that was one of those unintended consequences type thing. And so I just think that needs to be uh, considered as a reason 
why we have. Uh, absolutely, yes. Thanks so much for that flow. And it goes to the, I remember, uh, or we saw that there's some incarceration laws being changed or rolled back now so that there's fewer people being incarcerated and so much of the population being black and uh, non-white. Um, the, the ramifications of having those policies or laws in place really were, was a problem as well for the black community. So, yeah, the welfare system, and the penal system both. But thank you, Flo. Thank you for that. Um, I'm going to post, uh, uh, I was going to run a video for us, but it's really review. But I think they, they, it's a summary of what the author has taught us so well, not so much about the individual racism that we may have as a result of what we don't know about and what we haven't been taught, but more along the lines of um, why communities, uh, why some communities suffer so much more than others. Um, it's called Adam Ruins Everything. It's six minutes long. Um, and it's, it's a great summary of all we've discussed up to, the, up to now. Uh, I don't think I'll have time to run it today anyway. Um, there is this, uh, <laughs> I love the candy store story in chapter 17, how her parents were teaching her, if you're good, fair, and honest, if you don't steal from the candy store, and when you come back and you, I remember doing this with my child who stole as a five-year-old or four-year-old. Tell them you're sorry and return what you stole and don't do it again. But that in her family, her argument, the author's argument was, and that's pretty much where it stops. If you're a good person, you, you're, you're good, honest, you don't steal and you love your family, end of story. But there's really, as she grew in greater, um, knowledge of what it was she was educated herself on. She found that there's so much more to being a person that is a good citizen of this country or the community that you live in. Um, did anybody else steal candy or teach their kids something other than just be good? My little brother did and he went through that. And that was a lesson to me. I never wanted my parents dragging me into a store and <laughs> making me apologize to the store owner. You know, one thing that I thought about in reading this was when she was older and she and her friend went into the store and were shoplifting and they got caught. Um, one of the things I thought about was that even then, if she, if they had been uh, African American, then very likely, rather than calling their parents, the police would have been called, and they would have uh, had to go through that whole thing and through the pro probably through the court system, and it could have had a very different outcome. Mm hmm. Very different outcome. One other thing that I, I saw in these chapters that I, I just wanted to bring up, it was when the first time when she set up these, um, the kids could come on the buses to the, to the, you know, to see the play or the concert or whatever it was. And she, because she had never gone to see about bringing these kids, she said, oh my gosh, they started getting off the bus and the, almost all of them were black. And she was like shocked. Well, yeah, that's, <laughs> you know, she, uh, and sometimes you wonder, cause she was, the, she was an adult and so naive, but um, maybe that's part of what we need to be doing. We don't just need to set things up. We need to see about doing something so that we don't have that kind of a shock. Well, that happened again in chapter 20 when she set up that big cultural event. Yes. And it went off, it was a big success. But when they went to review it, yeah. 
they didn't say they, they were happy how it turned out. The, the little a black child said, I was scared to death. <laughs> she didn't yeah. realize that because she had someone else go into the community. She never went into the communities to meet the people. Yeah. Uh, and she left that organization at, that was her last job. And I think she felt that she didn't do as good a job as she first thought. She hadn't done her homework. Yeah. yeah. She was really so proud of her. her. Yeah. Well, and that was part, I mean, you think about the, the housing laws and how um, a lot of low income housing in cities particularly was eradicated and people were moved into, um, you know, the big apartment com apartment buildings, you know, projects. I don't know how many stories high, yeah, under the projects. And uh, the areas of low income housing that were eradicated were areas where minorities lived. And so I guess she just was not aware of any of that or it would have occurred to her that um, you know, if they were coming from the projects, they were probably, uh, probably black or perhaps black and Hispanic. But, um, I, you know, we've, we've allowed a lot of not great things to happen in this country. And yes, and set up a lot of great things so that bad things happen. And sometimes it's by mistake, like Flo was talking about earlier. But, uh, yeah, doesn't work. Doesn't we have problems, uh, and the legacy of those problems persists. Um, let me show you. There's a, a. This is about one minute long, minute and a half long. A little clip. Oh, before I, I don't want to forget. A lot of this comes down to banking. I mean, the, the the very foundation of if you can't get a loan, like Linda. Um. Or, and I, I know I got loans for education, my kids did. Um, that, then we're, we have a disparate or a, a divided um, financial system in the United States and it, it favors one group more than another. So Art has a friend that, <laughs> that he has invited to our class. He's not here today, he's gonna be answering questions that we have that are specific, but he won't be available via Zoom. Is that right, Art? That's my understanding from what he said. I haven't had a chance to uh, get in touch with him, uh, rushing off to a, uh, a Zoom, uh, a Facebook church service. <laughs> okay. Well, if he could join us via Zoom, that'd be wonderful. Um, well, to I will try to get in touch with him and, and get more contact with him if I can. That'd be great. That'd be great. What, what, what is he going to talk about? Well, I sent him an extensive quotation from the book uh, about the banking industry, about the redlining of neighborhoods and so forth. And uh, with the comment that I'd like to have him uh, give his uh, perspective on um, just uh, as a banker of that era between the 50s and the 70s, and then another uh, update on what's going on in the banking industry today. Oh, that'd be great. That would be wonderful because I think we dwell too much on what happened 400 years ago, what happened 50 years ago, what happened. I mean, we've had so much progress in so many ways with at least the ability of um, the black community. Uh, what was it today or yesterday in the paper about Yale is in trouble because they have been um, allowing more blacks than they will Asians and whites. And so I, not sure exactly i read the article but uh, anyway so we need to look i think at what is available today or what you know how discrimination like in the banking or do we have redlining today um i think 
I'd like yep. to hear a little bit more about no, I'm, I'm eager to hear what he has to say, too. Yes, he was absolutely. recommended to us, by the way, by Dick Archer, who was also in the banking industry. And uh, uh, I asked those questions of Dick, and he's no longer active, but Dick feels like things are much better today than they were. The picture is not as gloomy as the one painted by uh, our authoress um, today, even though uh, her book was published in 19, uh, in 2017. So it should be fairly, uh, fairly up to date. But um, I think that um, uh, getting the first interview, uh, Jeff uh, Davidson uh, will be president of a um, bank that's opening up in Belton in the next year or so. So he's a, a pretty informed guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, look forward to and he's the individual that might be able to join us someday or at least answer questions. Jeff? I don't know whether he'll actually get on Zoom and join questions or whether he will write his answers out. It right. may be that he's just a little bit um, worried about um, having making some verbal statements to a bunch of people he doesn't know when he's about to be president of a new bank opening up in <laughs> So he might Makes prefer sense. everything uh, transmitted back and forth in writing, which would be fine. That would be fine. Um, but we'll see where that goes. Okay, great. Well, if you have any questions, uh, you can send them to me um, via email or you can post them on our uh, Facebook page for our group. Um, we'll get them sent on to Jeff. Right. Uh, well, uh, not the yes. comment looking too much into the past. Uh, I know my uh, uh, larger and older family roots were uh, very much um, guilty of that when they referred to the recent unpleasantness with the North. Yeah. Yeah. Right up to uh, like now, some of them. Well, they were mostly thinking of 1863. <laughs> I know, but I have had relatives who've recently died who, until they died, oh, talked yeah. about the recent unpleasantness. Yeah, that phrase. I like the part about the law of northern aggression better. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You say that so well. Oh, she ought to be in pictures. Um, who would be so kind as to close us in prayer? I don't know. Before we do, yes, I have to mention a book. I don't think you, you can see it or not. It's called A uh, Greater Story by Sam Collier. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Sam Collier. He's a black man, a uh, preacher, a uh, teacher, a um, teacher. He, uh, this was recommended to me, but not the book, but a podcast, I think, Janice put me on to it, and I was intrigued by this man, and uh, his book is about my, his rescue, and your purpose, and our place in God's plan. It is a very, very, it doesn't deal a lot with racism although he grew up in Al in uh, atlanta and still lives in atlanta and uh, anyway it's an interesting story and his words about um seeking god uh, god's plan for your life are really good and he's quite an, uh, so i just wanted to suggest that i have it uh, too if somebody wants to borrow it it's uh, called a greater story yes mm -hmm. sam collier he tells about how when he was on the Steve Gar Harvey show, I don't even remember Steve Harvey, maybe some of you do, and how his birth mother, who had put him and his sister up for adoption and so forth, you know, 
20 years ago or more. So anyway, it's... Wow. I'll try to put a lot of these um, verses on our Facebook page. I have them jotted down here. and I'll make that something to, to get accomplished so that y'all can get that if you didn't get them written down. Um, and pass them on to friends as well. One, one. Not an angry black man, so that's... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me close us in prayer. Lord, thank you so much for this time together uh, that we would grow in knowledge and uh, help us to be drawn to your wisdom that we would know how to go forward um, knowing what uh, we've learned through this author's work, uh, this book. Thanks so much for your love and we pray that we would share this love as we go forward with what we've learned. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you all for being here and have a great time at movies with Claire will help us to enjoy at two o'clock. Go see Yankee Doodle. Yankee Doodle Dandy. Yankee Doodle Dandy. Yankee Doodle Dandy. <laughs> Claire, where can I go see that movie? Um. <laughs> The one place I found is on Amazon. You can rent it for, I think, $3. Um, that gives you a 48-hour rental period. Okay. It's a great movie. It is. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We'll see y'all next time. Can, can I ask y'all a question? Yeah. Sure. Susan, Mike said that um, he could see the words. Yeah. On Facebook? Yes. Can't hear you, Susan. You're muted. Okay. Um, yeah. On the um, we we I was we were watching it on TV. I mean, on the big computer, and at the bottom of the screen, the words were um, going along that were when David read and when Sally read and when Becky read and then when Gerald was doing his sermon the words were showing up i was too far back that i couldn't see the words but i could see that they were being printed how so did you see, see it get from that casting you go to settings, from you my go to settings on facebook go to settings and it, when you click on that it'll show you caption on or off i keep the caption on when i'm watching the sunday morning if there's a little clog. See it all today yeah it's a little clog like thing and you yeah, click on it, yes, right and corner. it says settings. I've been doing that since we started this, yeah. Oh, you know, I, I thought it was just something. As a matter of fact, anything pretty much you watch on Facebook, you can get the captions. Um, some of them you can't, but but I, I did get it this morning up to 44 minutes and 52 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was kicked so, out entirely. Do you do it when you go on to the video itself? Yes. That's when, okay. okay. Yes. And it's like, it's like a little wheel, like a, like yeah, a wheel. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. We do it I all the time when we listen to British shows on PBS. Oh, yeah. The closed yeah. caption, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. I didn't know. I didn't either. That's wonderful. Oh, I yeah, didn't it's, know it's not perfect. Time. It's pretty good. <laughs> I don't, I, I, I don't think we did, we clicked on anything, so I don't know how. We got it. I thought it was something Amy had added. Um, I don't know. Well, so sometimes in the past sermons, uh, services, we have seen words come across, and I haven't done anything to get that to happen. But yeah, I know. And, and it wasn't like the singing, no other words except the sermon and the readings of the lessons. Otherwise, it didn't come across. So anyway, yeah. it was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I just pulled it up from this morning and I don't see a little clog. Look in the was, bottom right corner. You might, it might be easier on a computer where you can hover with a mouse. Yeah, okay. It pops up when you hover. When I turn I off the, when I turned off the sound or when I put it down to zero, the word started showing up. Hmm. Yeah. We had the handle. I don't know. Anyway, it was cool. Okay. I'll try to play with it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Right. You next week. Bye, y'all. Yeah. Bye. 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 Oh, what chapters for next week? Oh, it's. <laughs>
It's the next section in the book, which okay. is uh, right here. That's okay. I can look up the section. Yeah, the whole section. And I'll post it as well, but I do have it. It is 21 through 28. Great. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.